Okay, Paul, welcome yes, sir. to the podcast, another podcast. Thank you, um, another one. Nice to have you here. Out of nice your to be back here, for, but uh, it's a long time ago since I was here. You know, so yeah, it's, get, it's you, get you out of your little, little room. Out of the gulag. Yeah. Out of the gulag, yeah, as you, as you said before. Um, how do you feel? How's life? Yeah, it's getting better. Um, got a lot of work to do, a lot of physio and stuff like that. But where I was just dumped in a wheelchair and said, just sit there until you die or we can get some treatment to you in England. Look what's happened in the months. NHS, but, right? Fucking NHS suck. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, I mean, I was, I was a defender of them big time. Uh, but the nurses are awesome. Mm -hmm. And all the workers, it's the fucking, the bureaucracy bullshit, you know? Uh, like the management and the people who run the NHS, they're just total assholes. You know, the, but the poor heroes, you know, the nurses and staff, mm -hmm. they're great, but their hands are tied, so they just didn't know what to do, they just dumped me. For people who don't know what happened, you had a bad infection. I caught sepsis, um, 2005, uh, 2015, and uh, it almost killed me. Mm -hmm. And I spent eight months in hospital in England. Um, you got a crucial 45 minutes to get as many antibiotics in you before you die and they managed to do that which is great then I spent eight months in hospital and then another three months in care home and then come out to my house but while I was in there getting things done in other hospital visits I caught MRSA there twice in the hospital. You got the whole thing yeah you hit the, the jackpot yeah I don't fuck around I got the whole lot yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was it so it, it keeps delaying kept delaying things delaying things except they won't touch you for two years and any operations and then they took this knee out and put this cement thing in. Mm -hmm. um, it's only supposed to be in every year. And the first time they put that in, it broke. So they cut me open again and put another one in. And that one's still in here. And why it's been in there this, this long, it's going toxic. Mm -hmm. So what the fuck are they doing over there at the NHS? You know? <laughs> and when I arrived here at the clinic, and they're looking me over, they found a fucking staple in my leg, which was in there from that operation mm -hmm. from four years ago. What's going on? Uh, you were butchered a little bit. Yeah, there's going to be a lawsuit, by the way. <laughs> but first, let, let's get you back in your Yeah, that's your, what I want to do. I'll, so I'll, it's been seven years since you walked. Uh, it's been what, seven years since you performed? Or no, uh, no, 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 been, no. been no. to Rock in Rio? Yeah, no, well, no, I was, I was a stick in the Rock in Rio thing. But um, no, it was after that. I, I did a couple of songs with um, the Iron Maidens. Uh, we had done a Carton Horses Day uh, in Stratford where Maiden first started. Mm -hmm. Went down there and met a lot of fans and that. And on the evening, I went down to the O2 and played with the Iron Maidens, the girls from California. Because they're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're great guys. They're, you know, we're, we're sort of quite good friends and that. So I went up and done a couple of songs with them towards the end. Uh, and that was the night I fell out of the wheelchair. <laughs> you fell out of your wheelchair? In my hotel room. And because uh, I got on the bed, it was a disabled bed, I managed to get on the bed, but I couldn't get off the fucking thing because it sank right down and I couldn't get onto the wheelchair. And I tried and it moved and I fell over and got all burn marks on, like carpet burn on my, on my oh. foot. And it never healed up for nearly six years. Fucking nightmare, huh? And now it's all right again now, so. Yeah, so, so you said you, you're going to have a gig in, in May. When in May, we all know Maiden's playing It's, it's the day before I have Maiden's show, so. So Maiden fans are in for a treat. Well, I have one's free, <laughs> so uh, it's just to say thank you. For so, so it's here in Zagreb, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and it's at the uh, Biker Beer Bar. Biker's Beer Factory. Yeah, yeah, because we went down and checked it out the other day. It was pretty good, actually. You like it? Yeah, it's a good yeah. place. Yeah, and it's open air, so what if you need it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Holds a thousand people. So, I mean, for me, it's going to be my first show in all these years. I'm absolutely shitting myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> but my boys are coming over from Norway. They'll be well rehearsed before me. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come into rehearsals here for three days and then have a go. Because I was not really sung properly. Have, do, do you sing now, like, for just for fun, for, you know? Yeah, have a little hum around with your headphones yeah, in, on. But in the nothing, shower and no, stuff? No, I'm not really belting it out. I can't really do it in the shower. We've got some guy standing there with me to make it on oh, it. It's just a nightmare. But, uh, no, nah, it's you know, but I think once you know how to do something, I, I don't suppose you'll lose it. <laughs> I hope not. I don't want to end up like Vince Neil. You <laughs> get a nice raspiness in your voice. You know? Oh, that's always there, mate. That, that was uh, that was uh, Jack Daniels and cigarettes, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen so much. Now. Cigarettes still do, but. Uh, so yeah, twenty. That's twenty-first of May then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 
Lots well, of I'm going to ask Steve if he wants to come down. Uh, cause Steve? He, yeah, Harris. Yeah, but, I might as well. Yeah, I might as well. Cause I, I was supposed to quickly on text the other day. I said, oh, I'm in Croatia. He goes, yeah, well, no. Well, all right, well, fuck it. Well, I won't say no more. But, um, yeah, that was it. But, yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, so it's, so it's looking nice. Lots of love from a lot of fans. From fucking all around the world. They've been so fucking awesome. Because uh, my medical bills when I first got sick in Argentina, I am paying them. And it cost me a fortune because I didn't have enough insurance and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I wiped myself out financially completely. Mm-hmm. And these guys have fucking saved my life. You know, they helped me get through this with, like, with, the, with the treatments and everything. All paid for by the fans. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I can, am I ever going to repay these guys? for their love and kindness and everything. Uh, if I lived a thousand lifetimes, I'd never be able to do it. They're absolute fucking stars. I mean, to show somebody that much love is fucking, oh God, here we go, sorry, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, they're just fucking amazing. It's, it's a big family, it's a big family. It's a hell of a family, they've been with me all the time, but, um, oh God, you upset me now, fuck <laughs> It means so much to me. They've actually given me my life back because otherwise I would have just sat in that wheelchair until I died. I was in such bad depression. Yeah, and that's that, that, that's sad, you know. Yeah, because I, I didn't see any way out, and for all them years as well. And every time I went up to the hospitals and that, they said, "Ah, you got everything, and I think we could do back you go." And all that. I know because when I saw that photo in I don't know 2016, 17, your leg looking like, like oh my God, what's happening with Paul Diano? Yeah, it's fucking terrible. But, it's but as you can see now, it's all coming out again. It's much, it's much better. It's constantly leaking uh, into a bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't try to sit on boys. And <laughs> don't worry, we don't have the bag on camera. No, I it's, think, it's, it's I think, in. I think. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you want to talk to somebody, fit them with a catheter. Fuck it. <laughs> bells, bells. My God, I'm not going to lie about it because you've got to have it done. Mm. Um, I thought, hang on, he don't pee that much. It's not pee, it's all coming out, it's all the fluid coming yeah, out. Yeah, from, from the whole body. Yeah, the whole body, because it's, it's your lymph node, which has all been infected and stuff. Mm-hmm. And So it's not just the legs, the legs is where it goes to the most, but all the rest of your body as well. So it's, it's, all, it's coming out from everywhere. That's what, as you can see, it's all going down rather yeah. nicely. I'm not going to be a supermodel ever, but you know. But Getting your legs back together. Well, that's know? the one, mate. Losing right. weight. Yeah, I want to be playing for West Ham next year. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not going to happen. But uh, well, the way they're playing now, I don't know if you're going to get your no, spot know, in the first eleven. No, we'll get in that team, will I? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just it's just going to be good just to be able to stand up and just to be able to move about, even if it is with an autosis, It's still going to be good for me. Really? <laughs> Are you fucking ready? Right, motherfucker! Okay, stand up. Now you finally got something going and... I've got a goal. Well, the goal's always been to be on stage again and sing and do something and come and meet all these fucking wonderful people who I've known loads of them from before and Mm -hmm. new ones to meet as well. You know, which is what I always thought being a musician was all about. Putting your music out to people and meeting them. Not jumping in the back of your fucking limo and into the hotel, no water glass, please. Fuck you. I know. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, but you, yeah, you already answered. You know, what do you want to do now? You know, some people want to change, maybe another career, hobby, go fishing. Fuck, I don't know what. Fucking fishing, not that. But, but kind of like Lemmy said, right? I'm, it's the only thing I'm qualified I'm a musician, to do. I was fucking born to play, man, and that's it. Um, I would like to be able to get back on my motorcycle again. That'd be good, but. Um, it's, it's quite, it's, got, it's feasible, it's possible, but uh, no, it's always been about music. I never once doubted that I'll never want to play music again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing a lot of sitting around over the years, obviously sitting around over the years, but uh, doing things to sort of occupy myself a little bit. And I'm really into history and stuff like that. History? Yeah, especially medieval history from the 11th century up to about the 1500s. And I started sketching out a little bit of a book where everyone's done it about the Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. And I had a little bit of that in there as well. But um, I was going more for the... These were Knights, not of the Temple though. They were were Knights of like Jerusalem. I was like the the Jewish Knights who fought along with them and that. And uh, trying to get a bit more research on that. And then suddenly things all got a bit silly with me with depression and all that. And I, I just sort of stepped away from it. Um, yeah, so you had a lot of time to contemplate things. I had a lot of time to uh, think about a lot of things, and most of them was thinking about death. Because mm-hmm. I couldn't see any way out of this. This hole got so deep and so dark and so black. It was fucking horrendous, man. I mean, because I, 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 
I didn't know I had PTSD, mm -hmm. but I do because of this. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, traumatic. Yeah. I mean, I thought you only got PTSD if you've been in like, Afghanistan or fucking Bosnia and course. stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not true. It's, you know, it's there, and the uh, fucking depression has been terrible. It's really been bad. It's affected everything in my life. But when you talk about depression, is it is it uh, some people find it inspiring? Some people say it's the only time when they can write songs. And no, well, I can't write. You, I, no, how does that work I, I for you? I couldn't write at all. The opposite. I, I've had a complete block. I uh, started writing with my friend uh, Ian, uh, who used to be a battle zone with me, and he wrote some really good shit, like music wise. It's a bit Sabbathy type stuff. We started mm -hmm. writing on it, and then it just, depression just got me. So I finished one one set of lyrics for him, which, funny enough, it's only one verse and repeat it a couple of times, but it works for the song. Mm -hmm. And then I started working on the other one, and then all of a sudden it just took me over, and oh, wow, I just couldn't do okay, it. I'm done, I kept yeah. putting it off, and I didn't want to mess him around, so I thought, oh, you know, like, get on with it. If you get another ride to make, go and do it. But he's, he's happy to hold on until I get back because we've worked with each other for years. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's been in Battle Zone with me, he was with a punk band with me as well. And, you know, he's one of my best fucking mates. Mm -hmm. So he's holding out for me there. Probably going to give me some shit over the Leeds game in a minute, but there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so, so what's your songwriting process? Like, what, what gets you into music? Well, no, when the guys give me the music. Is uh, it, is it, okay, somebody sends you, you, you just write the lyrics, you don't do music. Nowadays, yeah, because I, I, I don't feel confident enough to sit down and like, write with lyrics, bass and that. Oh, lyrics. okay, okay. Lyrics, yeah, I've got, I've got to be inspired by, I'm uh, inspired by myself. And, mm -hmm. You know, I write all sorts of shit, me, <laughs> to be honest with you. Sometimes it's got a little political twist in it. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's, uh, on the last album I've done with the uh, Architects of Chaos, from the band, the last band I had, uh, with the German guys, we had fucking some great stories in there. There's one about aliens who uh, was looking over the earth, it's like a bit like that sort of uh, ancient astronauts sort of mm -hmm. theory, like that. but they've come to destroy the world because we keep fucking it up anyway, so they're <laughs> going to do that. That was one of them. Um, then we not, we've done another song called When Murder Comes to Town. When Murder Comes to Town. Yeah, which was I thought was a great lyric. And uh, it's all about uh, the woman hiding, a little girl hiding in the cupboard while she's watching her mother and father being hacked to death by a maniac. Ooh. So I thought that's quite a good one. <laughs> and, and the little lead up to the chorus was Lie So Still. <laughs> so yeah, we had all that. I've done another one about, um, when it, that was when depression really got me, called Switched Off Release. You know, it's like, you just want to go away from it all and then head towards the light. Mm -hmm. And I've done a little girl's voice over it going, come to the light, come to the light sort of thing. Yeah, it's quite, quite good. <laughs> Shane the band were a bunch of wankers because uh, Ah, because I got ill, they they did they wanted it was my band. I gave it the name and everything, mm -hmm. and they decided that they wanted to try and get another singer. which didn't fucking work. No, especially when the guy's got a name called Titsy. Oh. Oh, sorry, <laughs> fucking douchebag. Anyway, don't try and take over my band. So the band's all f fell apart, and we don't even speak anymore. None of us. Shame. The songs are good. Yeah. Right. So so that's that's how the process is sort of now. I know you you told me already. Um, and I know you get bored to death with all the questions that, that made them probably. Well, that's because I've answered them a million times and there's only, a, there's only certain ways you can do it and answer it to make it interesting. But there's, there's still so, so much speculation yeah, going but, around, but, but conspiracy theories. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't buy into that shit, you know. Uh, Rod Smallwood might be an alien, for all I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking great at his job. I've never seen another manager who can do that. But um, there must be something special about him. But uh, no, nah, well, I don't know. This, this, you've got to find a different way to make it interesting for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure Steve does it. I'm sure everyone in the band does it. Because they've been asked all the same questions over and over and over and over. So you've got to try and make it interesting for yourself. Mm -hmm. But stick to the right path. Don't sort of go off and yeah, 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 sort yeah. of lie and fabricate it all and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it is. And sometimes it can get you down a bit as well. Because I'm doing this now. And I haven't done interviews for a long time, obviously. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any reason to, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Or if I did, I would have been fucking whining and moaning about what happened to me, which is not really a good thing to be doing, you know. I think everybody's going to be happy as soon as you're back on stage. Some might not be. <laughs> the death is repaid. The death some is some repaid. might not be. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I'll do everything I possibly can. Because, like, as I said, normally with us, we, we'll play a concert. And we finish around about 11, 12 o'clock at night. I'm still there till 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, signing autographs. You know, I might just go, in. even though we've got a show the next day, well, fuck it, you know. What? Yeah, I'll, I remember in 2009. I, yeah, I wouldn't have anything if it weren't for these guys anyway. Yeah, that's true. They give you 
They buy your records, they come to your concerts. So why the fuck would you say, no, I'm not doing all guys tonight, I wanna, I wanna go to bed. You're, mm-hmm. you're a dick if you do that, you've got to, you know. I remember in 2009 you had a concert here in Zagreb and I was with Stipe at the show and you looked tired oh, after the show but you're still like okay come in and you yeah, poured I'm me a, a, I'm always there man poured me a glass full yeah. of vodka we had a drink yeah. smoke you know I always do that you know that's the best you can do um, because they've come all this way they've bought your records they've paid money for the concert and stuff so the least you can do is say hello and a little bit of hospitality if you can you know mm-hmm. I think it's only fair and it's respect yeah, yeah it's yeah. respect for the fans because you know they've done everything for me and uh, I'll work on loyalty and respect me. I always have, and I always will. If you ain't got none of that, you ain't worth my time. Mm-hmm. You know, so simple as that. So, so you said in, in Steve, you, you keep in touch. Uh, uh, only recently, only on text messages. You know, Steve phoned me up from the Bahamas a couple of uh, last year sometime. Just got a phone call out of blue. I didn't even know who it was. I went, hello, he goes, oh, it's me. I went, oh, fucking hell, hello, Steve, how are you? <laughs> and yeah, we had a little chat, but then we've been texting each other and that. And, we always sign off for the cross hammers and that because we're both, you know, fanatics. Up um, the iron. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. So uh, yeah, that was it. And, oh, God. and uh, yeah, he said to me, you know, I know you're over here and all that, but you know, I haven't taken it any further than that. Well, just, just little messages here and there, that's all. Mm-hmm. Nothing spectacular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and last time you saw, you were in Rock and Rio, what, two, three years ago? No, I was trying to get it about six years ago. Oh, six. When Maiden, Maiden was on there as a headliner, and uh, I went up with some friends of mine. Are you ready? No one knew I was going to be there. It was a total surprise. And I went out there. Oh, none of them knew? No, nobody knew. Not even the fans. So we went out there, and I went out and done um, ACDC, Highway to Hell, and Ramones, Blitzkrieg Bop. Your favorite band? Yes, yeah, right. So your favorite band? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Always. Yeah. And I went out and done that. And the fans, when they said, oh, I'm fucking mad. And then, as soon as I come on stage, I missed Iron Maiden because I had fucking autographs and interviews up the wazoo. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That was Monica Cavallera's fault. <laughs> but she put it together, which was, oh, it was kind of cool, though. I liked it. Um, so over the years, you performed with a lot of bands. Yep. And I just wanted to ask you, how was that negotiating process with promoters? You know, let's say you do a solo tour, it's Paul Diano, and then they, do they, you know, try to talk to you into putting X, Iron Maiden? Oh, they'll do that. They'll always do that, you, you know. How, how do you feel about it? Like, uh, just, just let, me, let me have my solo career, or like, yeah, yeah well, no, fine, no, might not, as well. So, it's going to sell for them. Yeah. You know, and, and also for me in the long run, I guess. Yeah. So, you just got to go with the flow, you know, really. But uh, it'll always be like that. Um, but now I've had such time away, I can now come back in with a different set list, mm-hmm. which is what I've been wanting to do. I want to try and sort of showcase some of the, the Battlezone albums, a couple of tracks off of each album, three albums, and a couple of my solo stuff, mm-hmm. and a few Maiden songs thrown in, which will yeah, kind of, course, of balance of it out a little bit, but you know, only about two or three, um, and I think that'll be fine, but we're just still working on it. And at the minute, for this show, here, I think there'll be about four or five Maiden songs, but then we'll work on that one. I feel a bit more comfortable, and then we start yeah, doing yeah, other yeah, things. The boys are learning two new Battlezone songs, or old Battlezone songs, but uh, which we, we haven't played. Which band? Before. You're a Norwegian band? Yeah, or? my Norwegian boys, yeah. They're going to come here and do the yeah, gig? Yeah. Um, I don't trust anybody else, because <laughs> we've played everywhere together. We've been all over the place, and even to India. And, uh, and it's been come fantastic. On. Yeah, it's fucking great, man. We had a really good time. And we've all been friends for a long, long time, you know, and you know, they really are like a second family because mm-hmm. we've, we've been together everywhere. Do that and uh, two boys from Sweden who are best friends of mine as well normally come along as well and he's a promoter over there, Mike. So yeah, it's all good. So. When, you, when we talk about new music, uh-huh. making new music, what, what are you inclined to do? Is it more punky, more heavy metal, more trash metal? Nah, more, 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 more punky metal sort of thing where mm-hmm. we're sort of heavying up each time I don't know why but, but heavier than the albums you did with me then oh fucking so. hell they're all heavier than that they're much heavier yeah got a lot more riffage in it <laughs> um, yeah yeah it's, it's weird and, you know because uh, my music tastes uh, all this sort of shit tons of punk music always always mm-hmm. have uh, and then you know listen to things like Fear Factory Sepultura 
mm -hmm. and all that shit, which is more Pantera like, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the kind of music I write as well, so which is good, you know. Um, just moved on from Maiden. Well, obviously, you can't move on too far because uh, you're always going to get it. X yeah, yeah, Maiden. I mean, <laughs> going to follow you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we it's tried it once or twice before in America years and years ago with Battlezone. We went over and played, and I didn't play one Iron Maiden song, and I nearly got fucking killed. They got Lynch because fans were hating it. Was, yeah. Well, no, they liked the songs, but as we didn't play Amazing songs at none, all, you played none. I kept run out to say it, and I thought, oh, I won't be doing that one again. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't trying to sort of be horrible about it. I just had a thing. I just thought, oh, let me play my stuff for a change, you know? And it's got like that now, but I think I can choose that now, you know? So t t tell me about your first gig with Maiden. You had a little mishap with the police. Yeah, well, as I said, I came out of work. Uh, I, I think, I, I think, I can't remember, the White Swan or something up in Hammersmith or something. And we knew Rod Small was coming down that mm -hmm. night to check us out about, you know, signing us to the management company. And I finished work and I took a shower at work and I put my normal clothes on and went up to Hammersmith on the train. And I had my work clothes in my bag. And I used to have to use a knife to get off these fucking caps of these oil drums. Mm -hmm. And I had it in my bag, and they decided to go in there, and the cop going, you know, five O decided to go in and do a, do a little raid to see if there's any drugs around, and check my bag out. I've got a knife with it. Oh, that'll do. You're coming with us. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so some kid. Your first gig. Yeah, some kid went up to Roswell and said, You know, you're a singer. I said, yeah, he said, uh, he's just been arrested. And he went, oh, fucking hell. And that was it. And uh, he had to come up to the police station and we straightened it all out and they let mm -hmm. me out. But Steve had to sing in between. <laughs> oh, dear. But he still came back to do a couple of songs. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, just towards the end. But Steve done most of it. Bless him. Mm -hmm. well, that's a real trooper for you. <laughs> some boots to fill in, too. <coughs> huh? um, he had some boots to fill in. Um, yeah, but, no, he's, but, oh, man, you know, like, Steve can get away with it anyway. Um, yeah, but you can't have it all. You'd be a fantastic songwriter, a brilliant bass player, but you can't sing with shit. And yeah, that's fair. And it's like that's me, fair. I can't sing, but I can't play bass and tap <laughs> right as well as with, so it all counteracts it. Did you ever play any instruments? I play bass very badly. Bass? Yeah, and drums. Uh, but uh, not good. It's <laughs> all about rhythm. Yeah, yeah, always. It's always about rhythm, rhythm mm -hmm. and riffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I know fucking lead guitarist, but I, I've taken up ukulele recently. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is so, so basically, when you're writing lyrics, it was just you, a pen, and a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, and keep the news on always, because you know I can write a lot about catastrophes and shit going on. Mm -hmm. But recently, they've not been so good. They've all been like fucking cyber shit and stuff like that. But I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that. But yeah, all sorts of things. I, I, I keep the TV on constantly and um, news channels i've got like three tvs in the house and mm -hmm. they're all on different channels and i can go from one room to the other and so it might catch your attention oh that's good yeah. yeah 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 uh when thinking about new songs and generally your preferences do you uh, you've done a bunch of things but you've also done songs you know that sound a little bit you know trippy so to say like remember tomorrow completely i remember asking this damn question Ah, uh, the song, it was something my granddad always used to say, don't worry about it, son, remember tomorrow, it'll be all right then. That's what he used to say. Mm -hmm. and, and that stuck with me, didn't it, was? And, but I did it like you're on a, yeah, like a trippy journey. Mm -hmm. You know, unchain the colours before my eyes, just like you've been taking acid or something. <laughs> but what it was, the colours are the ones which, I'm making you make your mind up to which path you're going to go on, sort of thing. But that was it. Nothing, nothing spectacular. It was just, just that. But everyone seems to have read a lot of. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different song. It's a different song. It is. Yeah. I know it's hard for you to be objective because it's yeah. your song. But yeah. yeah. The, the title, as I said, was just what my grandfather used to say, mm -hmm. um, and I, I used to love him for that because he was brilliant. And, um, yeah, and I just used it. It doesn't really make any sense to the lyrics mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, sometimes they don't have to be no, yeah. another message. It's, it's like, don't worry about all the bullshit. Just remember tomorrow, I'll return from that, you know, from out the fire or crap, and there you go. And that mm -hmm. was it. So it's, it's not Shakespeare, is it? But <laughs> <laughs> what can you do?
time did you spend in Brazil? Oh man, well, since uh, late eighties, been going over there all the time and lived there for a while in Curitiba and Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. And Had a couple uh, bands there. Yeah, I've got a few bands over there, which are all friends of mine who who play with me, and um, I'm very privileged to have them with me. So they're all good. A band called Raging My Eyes. They used to be called Salarata. They're fucking a big following over there. Um, I played with some really class musicians over there as well. Um, from the Solo Nomad album, uh, there's all, all Brazilian musicians. Um, Achilles Priester is one of the greatest drummers ever over there. Mm -hmm. uh, very famous. Um, and my old guitar player, Paulo Turin, who died of COVID last year, unfortunately, in Brazil, which is a shame. He was my main songwriter, me and him, for the Nomad album. And, that. Mm -hmm. and he used to be part of Battlezone as well, when he lived over here in, in England as well. So, so it's very sad. Yeah, fucking COVID is a cunt. <laughs> yeah, we're all sick of it. Yeah, yeah, but they keep coming up with another, another variant will come up just to try and keep us all under control. Well, supposedly this one is going to be the last one. Yeah, until they can think of something else to keep us <laughs> under control with. Well, we're all being manipulated. They, 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 this is a conspiracy, I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. uh, just to, they've tried to do, like, recheck the world a little bit and. Uh, they can't really do a, like a massive cull of the world mm -hmm. as such, so, mm -hmm. but I found this way to do it. I think you know. Those are inspiration for a new album. Keep the numbers down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I think I might get myself in a bit of trouble there if I did that one. Because <laughs> I am still convinced that yes, COVID exists. Because my wife's father died of COVID mm -hmm. too a couple of years back, and it's very tough. And I've lost a lot of friends through COVID. I know it exists. I know you can die from it, but to the mass hysteria around it. Yeah, I yeah. think is mostly government based. There's there's a lot of shady things happening there. Every Not government, everything every there. government's the same. Every damn government. Um, so they're probably these leagues of nations and the fucking G seven summits. Mm -hmm. They're probably all sitting there, have a cup of coffee and a beer, saying, right, what one should we do this time? What's it going to be, the Black Plague or <laughs> fucking Omicron or Pick whatever? Pick your card. Yeah, this is it, you know, I'll flip me for this one. Yeah, oh, fuck, you know. They're all mad. Mm -hmm. The best thing, unfortunately, you've got to have some sort of government, but none of them have been my fucking choice, that's for sure. You need to get a couple of punk and like rock musicians and poets and things like that to be poets, uh, to be like, you know, the, the people who are in control of the countries because they're a bit more in touch with people. Mm -hmm. Not some guy who's been to fucking Oxford and Cambridge and yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. identify with the people. Do you fuck? But even in music, there's there's no kind of, I don't want to sound cheesy, but there's no, you know, resistance anymore. No, there like isn't. Back in the 70s, 80s, even when I was a kid, I'm not that old, but it was still, you know. There was, yeah. Uh, it, it's a little bit start, like... Starting with Dylan, you know, in the 60s, 70s, well, before there's people before that. and. Bob Marley, another one, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, these people are fucking geniuses. Uh, nowadays, and that, especially with all this crap on TV, like fucking X Factor and uh, America's Got Talent and all that shit, these people think they're entitled to do this. Can't sing a fucking note, can't play a fucking instrument, <laughs> but they think they want to be instant rock stars. Go fuck yourself and go, go, go out on the road first and see if you can do it, mm -hmm. and then come back to me, and then say, oh, well, I think I should be a rock star, yeah. Who, what is a rock star? What the fuck is a rock star, anyway? I don't know. Yeah, well, what's the definition of it? I don't know. A fucking idiot, as far as I'm concerned. Smoking yeah, too much, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I've got one. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, I can't get out of there, man. Oh. We'll get right. What's next? Because <laughs> uh, like I need some coffee. <laughs> yeah. You must look out for Same one? Yeah, big one, please. Thank you. Half a litre? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Oh, half a litre. Just a yeah, flat white, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh god, I fucking wiped out today. Here comes the coffee. Oh, thank you very much. 
Thank you. I'll be there. I can't even speak English now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned earlier while we were having lunch, uh, you like to cook. Mm -hmm. Also, one of your hobbies. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Croatian cuisine? I've only tried a little bit of it, it was really good. It was really good. I had some bolsa meatballs and all the other day, which mm -hmm. was pretty damn good as well. But uh, I had one one piece of um, Croatian food, which uh, Stefan took to his place, and it was fantastic. I can't remember what the fucking name it was called, though. What did you get you? What did you get him? Huh? In a bookstore. Oh, a cookbook. No, no, no. We're talking about no, that, no, dish, that, dish, that dish, meal. What did you eat? What, did you, what kind of food did you give him? Croatian food. When we when we went to that the beer, fact, beer factory, beer, yeah, you give me that Croatian food. What the fuck was it? Was it? Kind of, sort of. Oh, okay, that's more that's more Serbian. That's yeah. more Serbian yeah. to be to be completely yeah. precise. Yeah. So when it comes to cooking over here in Croatia, yeah. Balkans generally depends on where you are. Here yeah. in the north, it's kind of like Hungarian with goulash and stew. Yeah, how about goulash? Lots you? of paprika and spice. Go down like the coast. It's more olive oil, fish. Now that's what that that that's more like what I like to eat though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mediterranean. I, yeah, kind of like, like Greek, Italian. Yeah, I love Greek. Of, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Well, your mom's Italian, so yeah, I love it. That's what I'm saying. So there you go. So. Fish is my all-time favourite, mm -hmm. and I eat, mind you, I eat lots of chicken and that. But uh, but I'm really good. At, for some reason, I'm really good at making Mexican food. I don't know why, but I didn't train or anything. Just taught myself, and mm -hmm. I was married to a Mexican anyway. But <laughs> that helps. <laughs> so you like them hot and spicy food and women, huh? <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> Yeah, we need to get you a Croatian uh, cookbook in English. I've ordered, I've ordered two. Oh yeah. They're, they should be at my home by the time I get home. Yeah, mm -hmm. I ordered two uh, on Amazon, so they, sh they should be at my house by the, by the time I get back. Mm -hmm. So I'll be messing around with that. Nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Yeah, gotta learn. Um, Paul, anything else to say to the fans? Something to let out? No, you don't stop me Life. crying. No, you make me cry again. Um, no, no, don't. No, I just want to say that you guys have basically saved my life, and thank you so much for everything. And as I said, in a thousand lifetimes, and whenever we able to repay you back. Um, but I'll do the best I can to keep it getting in trouble and um, <laughs> making a lot of noise. <laughs> See you soon. I Thank guess. you. Twenty first. <laughs> Absolutely. Of May. I yeah. can't wait. Yeah, thanks I'll, for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll be sh I'll invite. be I'll be shitting myself on the stage that night. No, 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 no. I'm sure you'll be fine. The pipes are still there. You're gonna be hopefully back in your feet. Get in the Norwegian band. And get a bunch of fans here. Yeah, even even if I'm not completely back on my feet. You're still uh, gonna I, be in a... Yeah, can I stand up for a little while? I still might have to have the wheelchair there for a bit, mm -hmm. but that's all right. It's never stopped me on stage, uh, unless I keep going too far and then I normally fall off the edge of it. But like, mm -hmm. well, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the clinic again. Fucking great. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. Hey, you're welcome. See you soon. Anytime. Cheers. Excellent. Cool. All right. Let's keep up. Go! Let's go! Shoot them in the middle back now! I want to walk! I don't know! 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 I don't